Hey, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our VFX core skills for beginners. So in the previous one, we did our photogrammetry, and hopefully you've organized all your data. Um, and I hope you kind of, you can move ahead if you want, um, but it, it, you'll get the best sort of experience if you just kind of, I know I can't get these out as fast as I, I would like to, but um, if you just hold on whilst I, I go through them, you can go ahead, so it's all fine, but um, you'll get the best out of it if you just uh, probably wait for the next tutorials. But um, you're more than welcome to go through my channel. Most of the tutorials are there briefly, but um, these ones are going to go in more depth. So in this one, we're going to go through and uh, just process our HGRI. And that's pretty much all we're going to do for this one. We're just going to load in PT GUI. Um, there are loads of other sort of software that you can use to do this. Um, like I say, I've always used PT GUI because I bought it ages ago. And um, it's always worked really well. And it's got loads of little things that you can do quite nicely in it as well. And it's just a really good tool. Um, but yeah, so um, we're going to process our HGRI. Um, so we can pass it off. Well, we won't pass it off, so we can give it to lighting, but we'll, when we get to the lighting stage, we'll take a look at it. So yeah, so hope you enjoy this tutorial. should be quite a quick one, but um, yeah, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this. So I've loaded up PT GUI. Um, you don't necessarily have to use PT GUI. You can use, there, there are other softwares out there that you can use. Um, like I said, I just use PT GUI because I've just bought it ages ago, and it's, it's always worked, and it's, it's reliable, and it's a great piece of software. It's, it's fairly inexpensive as well, but um, like I say, there are, there are probably some other free al free alternatives out there. So the, the UI is really simple. This is really simple software to use if you're just making HDRIs. Um, it pretty much, in almost a similar fashion to Metashape, it pretty much says exactly what you need to do up at the top left. So I'm not going to worry about any of this because it's kind of, I, I don't need it yet. So I'm just going to go and load my images. And I'm going to go to my data. So yours will probably be, be should be in your uh, onset folder. Lighting HDRI. And there are two. I forgot that I actually took two. Um, so I know, I probably should have said this there. We can do both if you want. But I know that I shot that last one at the end of the day. So the one I chose from my clip is actually at the end of the day. We can... Process both, it's absolutely fine. Um, but it just means you've got two different HDRIs. Well, they'll be almost exactly the same, to be to be honest. So you can see we've got all our bracketed images here. And hopefully they're all orientated the correct way, which is fine, they are. So I'm just going to select all of them. And you can sort of see... A I won't go through exactly how I take it because I've got a, like a quite a thorough tutorial on, on how to do this, and I'll just link this in the description as well, um, which goes through it in much deeper sort of depth, and you'll get a good understanding. But um, and all the gear, but you don't have to have it all. Cool. So I'm just gonna stop blabbering on and get on with it. And I'm gonna select open, and this should start loading the images. Um, it can take depending on how many images you got on how much. Uh, I think this is quite RAM intensive sometimes so it might take a while to load them in general rule of thumb just wait for all these thumbnails to pop up first before you align images because you can do it but it'll just still wait for it to be loaded but you can see it's sort of loading in all our bracketed images in the correct order and that's why we don't when we do copy these into our sort of folders we make sure we copy it all as a one and don't break up the the bracketing sequence Otherwise, you may have if if you break the sequence, um, it's it's quite. It's only if you copy things separately it kind of sometimes breaks it, but most of the time it's fine. Um, it'd mean that you'd have to align the points manually, which is not a fun job. Um, so that's why you want to keep it all nicely organized and try and copy these all all at once. Don't do them separately and keep it all together and nice. That's why the first steps of organization is quite quite helpful and this process will be very quick and easy for you instead of long and painful matching points so we can just scrub through and we can sort of see the angles that I've got here and this is the sort of method that I use for I know there's lots of other methods but I find that this is the most optimal way we're shooting the least amount of pictures with the best coverage um, and I, I usually explain that I'll 
sent put a link to my um, thorough tutorial on it. Cool, so they're all loaded in now. We can select our source images up at the top. You should have this tab. And we can look through and remove any ones we don't need. So we can go to crop here. So if I just go look at all these images, because they're all taken the same, the crop only needs to be done on one image. So you can just pick one that's the most exposed. And you can sort of see it's done a rough guesstimation of where it should crop out because this is obviously the, the lens ring or the casing. We don't really want that. So we can select the crop and we can just bring it in. We don't want to bring it in too much because it does automatically crop quite nicely itself. But if we force it a little bit more, we'll reduce the amount of because around the edges you'll get quite a lot of chromatic aberration. So we can actually, because we've got quite a lot of overlap, we could probably reduce that from the HDRI just by cropping it in a little bit further. So it's a way, it's, if I can zoom 100%. So you can see up here, around the edges, we've got a lot of chromatic aberration, which can s slip into your HDRI. So we can crop in further than the, the lens casing to sort of remove that. You're not going to get rid of all of it because you can still see some of it here, but we can see the worst is here. So we can actually just go to fit down here. And that should translate to all the images. So you don't have to do it. You only have to do it once. Cool. And mask. Um, you can mask these out. Uh, I go through, there's a tutorial where I mask this out. Um, I, I don't generally always do it. Um, I don't find it too beneficial because you can, you, if you really wanted it removed, you're going to paint it anyway. So masking it will just, sometimes it works and removes it, but at the end of the day, it's still going to have this in there and have my feet. So, um, and it takes longer to process. So I'm actually going to skip the masking because I don't really want to do it, but you're more than welcome to do it. Um, I've got a tutorial on that as well. So I'm just going to select line images and if you haven't broken your sequence, you should get this. And this means that you're going to have a good time. And if you don't get this, it will ask you to align images, which is not great, which is basically you're going to have to plot points on every single image to match them up. And it's, it's re really not enjoyable. So all we need to do is select enable HDR mode and link the bracketed images. So it understands that, that we've got eight sets of 10 bracketed exposures, which is great because then it's just it already knows what it needs to do, so the processing is going to be faster. And we got our HDR method, and I'm just going to put it on true HDR. And honestly, I've never used extro uh, exposure fusion. I've just always just kept it on true HDR, um, just because it's just what I've always done. Because true HDR sounds more right. I'm not going to explain the difference because I don't know that much of the difference, so I've always just used that. Anyway, so I'm just going to select OK. And this will go through and analyze all the images, like it says, but it already knows some of them are bracketed, so it doesn't have to work as hard. So it's just going to stack them and create a high dynamic range of each of the segments, then stitch it all together for you. And so if you did put the masks in, um, this would take a lot longer, depending on how good your computer is, that is. And uh, mine does get stuck at some point, but it will come back to life. <laughs> cool. I don't think it's done. It's still going. Oh, no, it's done. I think. No, it's still going. It's just uh, the window's gone behind. There we go. So you should have this window pop up. And because this is an older version, I've, I should probably update this to be honest, but um, I like, I th I've used a new version, I don't like it, I like the old one. Um, you should get this window, and this is not a, well this is a kind of an accurate representation because effectively we're seeing this because we're seeing this in a linear colour space because it it'll, when you use PT GUI it'll put your HDRIs into a linear colour space straight away, so it'll be quite dark. But don't worry, um, that's perfectly normal. So what I do tend to like to do is it's tricky on this one because we've got so many light sources here. 
but I can kind of see that the sun is around here. So I do like to pull my main sun source to the center. Just because, or well, it doesn't have to be banging this in the center, as long as it's not on the edges. And we can select straight in panorama. Oh, didn't like that. Cool. Third stream, I like panorama. Okay. Cool. So that looks fine. So the reason why I put that in the side, in the middle, is if if you need to paint it out or do any comp stuff with it or you need anything else, it's just not on the edge. It can be here, it can be here, but um, if you've got it right on the edge, it means that like you've got to edit it here and edit it over here. So it's just nice to have it in the center. But um, yeah, uh, I don't think we can actually change the. So you've got all these tools up. We don't need to. Let's just try and level it. No, it's not liking the leveling for some reason. But it should be fine. It looks pretty level. So we don't need that window anymore. And all we need to do is click create panorama. And it will give us the best height and width for our panorama, which is, is quite a large image. So you should have really good details for like uh, reflections and stuff if you're doing something like that. Cool. So you've got some options here. You've got the LDR file format, which is basically just a low dynamic range, which is just JPEG, TIFF, Photoshop. So like I'll just leave it as a JPEG. And you've got your HDR file format. And this is differs between what companies choose and how you want to do it. But I'll always just select OpenEXR because it's just it's just what I've always done. So um, I've got the LDR, which is something that we can view, and OpenEXR, which will render all out the dynamic range in the container. So now we've got our output file. I'm just going to go browse. And unset lighting, HDRI. And I'm going to make a new folder here. And I'm just going to call this processed. Um, zero one underscore processed HDRI. Oh, it's not typing. Just so I know that's easy, it's right at the top, and that's where my process HDRI is. So I'm just going to rename it down here at the bottom. I'm just going to call it uh, Bird Box. It's always good to name it to uh, the, the project so you know it's always matching with the plate. Um, it's got HDRI. Uh, VO1. So this is our raw Birdbox HDRI. I'll click save and create panorama. And this will stitch it all together and hopefully it should uh, work pretty well. And depending on how good your computer is, it, it might take a while. Um, if you've done the masks, this can take quite a lot longer as well. It's kind of why I skipped doing the masking because if you really do want that removed, you would just paint it out anyway. So there's no point going through all the masking of it. Um, it's just easier to paint out. Um, but it's entirely up to you. It's good to sort of explore those sort of different methods, but this is just how I do it. So Cool, so now that's done, um, we can just open up Photoshop and just take a, take a look at it and we can see how well it's done. <laughs> so Photoshop's opened up. So the first thing that I want to do is just open up my uh, HDRI. So it's going to go File, uh, Open, and let's open up both of these. And one's a JPEG, and one will be an Open EXR. So this will ask us to bring in our alpha channel data. We're just going to leave it as transparency, because we don't actually have that much alpha data in there. So we can see here, this is our JPEG, our low dynamic range. And you can see here, if we just zoom in, the PT Guru's made a fairly decent job of just like, hey, that's not part of there. We can just chop that out. So that's what I mean by you, you could have masked that all out and it wouldn't have made much of a difference because this is all going to be there and you could just paint that out. Or you can just paint it all black. The black will just come out as a not readed in the HDRI. And if we go to our image adjustments, if we go to our exposure on our LDR, 
you can see the whole thing. Do you know, what? it has like the smallest amount of dynamic range. Like we're talking useless amount, um, nothing that can really be used. Um, but you can see it's sort of almost getting brighter in the, the light areas. But all in all, it's just getting. It's an LDR, so I just want to show you this between the JPEG. And now when we go to our HDRI, it's a little bit darker because it's in a linear color space. But if we go image, adjustment, and exposure, we can now properly expose this from the dynamic range. And you can see how we can almost um, change the time of day now on this. This is why it's so good, because we can, I don't know, turn it into an... So we could turn it much darker and shade the the highlights a little bit more blue for a nighttime look. We can make it really bright. And we can see that the light source is actually coming from here, uh, from the light. So it's if we go try and reduce it, if you can see that, we can see that the sunlight is coming from here. So we've got it nice in the center. And this is why people like doing, and you can almost see it there. So we've got a lot of dynamic range here to play with. And yeah, it's quite fun to play with high dynamic range images. So you can sort of do some fun stuff with that if you want. Cool, so that's all working fine. So we're pretty much done with processing the HDRI. Um, we'll leave this as a raw um, format. When we get to lighting, we will, we will do a match grade like we did in Resolve. Um, it's worth waiting for me to do that in Resolve because um, it will make it will make everything so much easier. And I'll show you how to use the, the color chart. And this is a good example why you probably want to put your color chart in a, probably a better place. I did used to have it clamped to my tripod, but I lost my clamp. So I'll probably get a new one. This is not really ideal, but it's better than not being there. We can still sample the colors. But anyway, that's just processing our HDRI. Um, we will do more with the HDRI when we come to the lighting stage, but I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, yeah, and I hope you're enjoying this series. It's a really quite thorough, it's, I know it's not super thorough, but if you get through all this, you're gonna be like really easily smashing through VFX and stuff like that. Um, it will give you a way good understanding. It's almost as good as getting a, going to university or college or something like that. So, and it's all free. So, and you're getting taught by someone that's currently in industry and worked at quite a few large companies. But yeah, anyway, I'm babbling on. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And um, yeah, hit that like button and um, subscribe for more like this.